Long ago, there was a powerful, mammoth-like monster introduced to the world of Monster Hunter. This monster had gained popularity amongst many hunters. It came to the point where they anticipated the monster would return to Monster Hunter World Iceborne. However, despite how well-fitted the monster would have been for the game, the monster never came. Let's talk about this monster. The monster was first introduced way back in Monster Hunter Cross Japan. That's Monster Hunter Generations for us Western audiences. This was a celebratory game of the franchise's history, or as the devs would like to call it, in this Monster Hunter game, four new flagship monsters were introduced in that series. Each one represents a threat to each well-known village in the old Monster Hunter games. And the story of our monster begins in this small village in the old world map of Monster Hunter, Pokey Village. To give you an idea where this little village resides in the old world map of Monster Hunter, Pokey Village is located in the north, just right beside the Furuhia Mountains, Snowy Mountains. It's a small village that is beloved by many second-gen hunters, like myself. We began our journey by meeting the village chief of Pokey. She's the Wyvarian, who's wearing a special coat and sits right next to the bonfire. While talking to the village chief, she explains to us her thoughts about her small village. She noticed how the village isn't well known by many people in Monster Hunter. She's trying to come up with some ideas on how they can begin to attract more people to visit their village. Besides that, most of the hunters are out of town and they have a lot of work that's been piling up in the village. She asked us for our help. Lucky for her. So, I began to work on the errands that had been piling up in the village. Most of these errands require us to travel onto the snowy mountains, or they would like to call Arctic Ridge. No, I prefer calling it snowy mountains because that's what I- In the snowy mountains, we cleared out some of the lurking small monsters and large monsters in the area, making the place a lot safer. However, things didn't end there the village had a lot of work that needed to be done before one day, Poke Village would become, as the village chief would like to call it, world famous. Of course, because of our kind efforts towards this village, the village chief wanted to give us something in return. She gave us their iconic Mafumofu armor. It's a cozy armor that helps you protect yourself from the cold. What a sweet gift from the granny. Until this happened, she had thought of, of a perfect idea to bring in more people in the village. She came up with an ideal food that would form an official Poke Village souvenir delicacy, Popo Tongues, from the Popo Monsters. Because of this idea, she wanted us to collect some Popo Tongues on top of the snowy mountains. Wait a minute, this story sounds so familiar. Off we went to the snowy mountains at night. Deja vu, am I right? While we were exploring the cold mountains, looking for some popo monsters, as we have reached the very mountain tops, we heard a heavy rumbling sound from the distance. There was a giant monster hanging out right beside the popo herd. The giant monster was aggravated causing all of the popos to retreat the area. Because of this terrifying situation, we decided to retreat and chase off the other popo monsters outside the area. As we got back from our hunt, we shared the terrifying story with the village chief. However, after hearing the story, she had a brilliant idea. Since the colossal monster was spotted again in the snowy mountains, what if, what if we could tame the massive monster? I don't know about this idea, chief. I don't think you were able to comprehend. It was daytime, 
and we went into the snowy mountains. We packed up our hunting supplies and rushed towards the cold mountain tops. You know, like I get a few times to get things started. And if it doesn't take it kindly to being broken in, well, then I guess you'll have to flex those hunter muscle of yours. You'll need to take care of it either way since it's bound to come stomping through the village. That's how the Poke Chief explains it. But if you read the quest description, she really wanted us to tame the huge monster so that Poke could have a better tourist attraction and be more famous than Yukumo and Burna Village. I doubt the monster would even fit the village. And as soon as we made it on top, we met the colossal monster once again. Gamoth. Let me tell you something about this monster. Gamoth is a fang beast monster, similar to some of the monsters you may have encountered or heard before. However, unlike many of the fang beast monsters, Gamoth is by far the largest fang beast monster in the world of Monster Hunter. Gamoth is also known to be the giant beast, or the other cool name the immovable mountain god. Gamoth is most often found in cold regions, places like Arctic Ridge, Frozen Seaway, Polar Field, and sometimes the monster is found in odd places like Forlorn Arena. Gamoths are typically kind towards small monsters. Better yet, the monster pretty much ignores the small monsters. However, in some cases, when Gamoth feels Threaten, the monster attacks without hesitation. The thing about Gamoth is that most of what we see in game are females. There hasn't been a record of male Gamoth as of yet. In terms of appearance, the monster looks like the mammoth animal in real life. Or it looks just like the popo monsters you see in-game that roam around the cold regions of the map. Let's take a closer look at Gamoth. Gamoth has a thick fur. Her pelt is durable and resistant to cold. To give you an idea on how thick her fur is, the jaws of a mighty Tigrex can barely wound the monster's body. She has this darkish blue hue fur with a bit of a red and white stripes flowing all over her body. Moreover, if we take a look at in front of Gamoth, we see a large thick brown plating, rather a hard shell-like structure that protects her face and her limbs. I found this out while researching. Her hard shell is formed in a way that it can be encased with lumps of snow. Gamoth would do this by breathing in a lot of snow from her trunk, then covering her legs with it, turning the lumps of snow into an extra layer of armor. She also uses the lumps of snow on her limbs as an offense. Whenever she slams both of her limbs onto the ground, the encased snow on her limbs explode, damaging all nearby creatures. Besides that, she has two large tusks. While in combat, she uses the big tusks to lift and trap any nearby enemies in the snow. Gamoth makes use of its trunk a lot during combat. It can dangerously create a big vortex, sucking in any hunter in its way, then trampling them with its gigantic limbs. Sometimes during combat, it would use its trunk to fire huge snowballs or collect objects to throw at. Some suggest that Gamoth is so strong that it can lift up and throw any flying wyverns with its trunk. Although outside of combat, Gamoth mainly uses its trunk as a tool while searching for food under the snow. Gamoths are herbivores that feed on vegetation such as grass, nuts and fruit, and wood hidden in their environment. One adorable note to mention, while Gamoths are still young, they are vulnerable to all sorts of predators. 
like the most notable predator in the snow, Tigrex. Because of this, the adult gamoth will protect its young with all her life. At a young age, the baby gamoth hides itself under its mother's body for protection. In some scenarios, the baby gamoth will flee and lay under the snow to hide itself from the predators that are present in the area. Because of the pure white fur color of the young gamoth, the monster can easily blend in the snow. Like many of the popos you see in game, the mother gamoth would sometimes join the herd of popos to increase the chances of her young survival. Because of this dynamic, the young gamoth has a minimal chance of being preyed on by monsters like Tigrex in the cold environment. While the gamoth is still young, it has a growing fear of Tigrex. However, as Gamoth ages and becomes an adult, its fear towards Tigrex eventually becomes rage. The Gamoth becomes a fearsome colossal monster. The more fearful a young Gamoth is towards Tigrex, the stronger it will become. Speaking of young Gamoths growing up, there's another type of Gamoth known as Elder Frost Gamoth. This monster is also known as the world's greatest peak, or Grandma by some hunters. Because of how this monster had lived in such extreme conditions, the monster had become so gargantuan, so ancient and strong that she was mistaken for the foot of a mountain. Likewise, with the normal Gamoth, Elder Frost Gamoth are females, and their male counterparts have yet to be seen. Her appearance is quite different from the normal Gamoth. Her thick fur has a silver-like hue, similar to the peak of the mountain. This change of appearance was due to the combination of harsh environment and her old age. The large plate on her face is shaped differently too. It's now asymmetrical, and the large crack can be seen in the center of her scalp. Another difference between a normal Gamoth and an Elder Frost, Gamoths normally cover their front and back legs with snow, whereas Elder Frost Gamoths only cover their front legs and trunk. However, the monster doesn't cover it with snow. Instead, she covers it with ice to increase the destructive power of the attacks. Because of how she lived in such harsh conditions, her respiratory system was enhanced. Over the years, she is able to suck up more air in their body, making them strong enough to pull and push enemies away. This huge monster can pick up massive snowballs out of the ground before smashing it towards its enemies. Also, Elder Frost can plow through the environment, sending several snowballs flying as she charges forward. It is said that Elder Frost Gamoth is capable of causing blizzards and avalanches that race down the mountain and ravage the plains. Because of how dangerous the monster is, you need a special permission ticket to hunt the monster. After we had slain Gamoth and headed back to the village, the village chief was happy to hear that we're alive and safe. If anything, she felt foolish thinking about how we could even tame the huge monster. She recognizes our hard work throughout our time in the village. Even though we were not a famous village, at least everyone was safe. Now, for the big question. Why was Gamoth never added in Iceborne? To give some context to other people, a few years ago, Monster Hunter World was introduced. The game was a success. New monsters were introduced, a few returning monsters, as well as new hunting locales. Not long after, the DLC for the game came along. Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Many fans, new and old to the series, were excited to explore and hunt monsters in the new snow area. Some even began to speculate who's going to return in the DLC. 
one of the monsters they began speculating was Gamoth. Considering the theme of Iceborne in the new cold map, this seems to be the perfect time to add the monster again in-game. However, there would be an interview with Kaname Fujioka, the executive director of Monster Hunter World Iceborne, and he explained why Gamoth was not added to the game. Fujioka explains how there were many new players that are new to the series. The idea was that he wanted to introduce to these new players each monster that represents each of the Monster Hunter titles from the past. To be fair, it is a neat idea considering Monster Hunter World was the game that brought a lot of new people into the series. Also, another contributing factor was the level design. Because of this, they decided to add Glavinus, representing Monster Hunter Generations, instead of Gamoth. It was unfortunate to hear the news. Like I mentioned, she was a perfect fit for Iceborne. All three of the Fated Four members made a return. What about Gamoth? Was it because not many people like Gamoth? Not really. Gamoth did pretty well during the Hunter's Choice for Top Monsters during Monster Hunter's 20th anniversary. Just a quick recap, there were 229 large monsters. Our Gamoth was voted 85th place. It's relatively high in the monsters list if you think about it. What does the devs think about Gamoth? The director of Monster Hunter Cross or Generations, Yasunori Ichinose, shared his thoughts on the Fated Four. Among the four main monsters, there was a troublesome monster, which you guessed it, Gamoth. <laughs> It's nice to see the developers talk about Gamoth. I'm excited to see how Gamoth is going to be in future Monster Hunter titles, and that's all I have to say about this monster. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.